Good evening, friend. This is your host to welcome you through the creaking door into the inner sanctum. Well, I've booted myself over to a traveling freak show this afternoon to see how the competition was doing. <laughs> Ran into an old schoolmate, fascinating fellow. We once voted him most likely to succeed. He did, and how. He's a high man in the snake pit. <laughs> a frightful accident happened near the squirrel cage. The peanut concessionaire went up in flames. Yeah, some joke had given him a hot foot. Well, before I left, the, the owner offered me a very lucrative job. Pick any cage you like, he said. I told him I'd think it over sometime when I got my mind back. <laughs> Tonight's inner sanctum mystery, The Corpse is Lonely, was written by John Robert and stars Larry Haynes in the role of Smitty with Barbara Weeks as Julie. And now for tonight's anguish. We're on the ground level of an old abandoned lighthouse on Jellicoe Strip, a narrow islet two miles off the North Atlantic mainland. It's the exact instant a sputtering fuse hisses close to a wooden box that reads, Danger, Dynamite. Near the box lying dazed are two figures. Julie. A boy and a girl. Julie. The boy rises, staggers unsteadily, Julie. then reaches down frantically toward the unconscious girl. Julie, get up. Ah. Julie will be blown to bits. Julie! Ah. The hundred-year-old lighthouse lies toppled in a crazy pile of shattered stone. One figure lies outside it, flung clear of the wreckage in a freakish whim of the fates. One figure, the boy. Blood spurts from head wounds and mixes with the sand under him. His eyes open slowly, and he stares in a slow circle, away from the lighthouse, as if trying to find it. His eyes fix... On nothing. Julie. Julie, I can't see. I can't see. I'm blind. I'll write my story on the wind. Yes. The short, happy story of Smitty Lonigan. It began with an old green bottle on the beach. Only yesterday. I've been out all day casting for sea bass in an old rowboat rigged up with an outboard motor. When I had enough, I ran the boat up on the beach. Except for the seagulls, I was alone. I thought. It was a beach at the tip of nowhere, a four-mile walk from town. I just dropped my anchor when I saw the old green bottle lying on the edge of the beach like it had just been washed ashore. There was something inside it, rolled up. And a metal stopper that took every ounce of strength I had, trying to pull it free. Let me give you a hand with that, kid. Who are you? Sharky. You don't need to look so green, I ain't gonna bite you. Well... Where, where, where'd you come from just now? I didn't see you. I was any... watching you from up on the dunes. Uh, hand me that bottle. Uh, uh. <laughs> there, it just takes a little muscle. Now, let's see what you found, kid. Yeah. Sheet of paper. Looks more like old parchment. Yeah, it does. There's a coin with it. Old green coin. Looks Portuguese to me. No, no. It's American. It's an old gold coin. Where? What do you know? Fifty-dollar gold piece at that. Yeah, what does the paper say? Well, it's old script, hard to make out. Don't give me that stall, make it out. Well, read it for yourself, why don't you? I don't read. Oh, come on, kid, come on. No need getting your back up. I can make out the words. One-third to the Lady Jane. One-third to the Croker. And one-third to the Sea. One-third to the Lady Jane. One-third to the Croker. 
One third to the sea. What does that double talk mean? I don't know. There's a signature on it. Uh, Captain Crow. That's, uh, that's all there is. <laughs> Lie sticking out all over your face, kid. Well, what do you mean? There's more on the back of that paper. Give it to me. Yeah. Part of a map. This is the third of the map that went into the bottle you fetched out of the sea. The second piece went to some Lady Jane, and another third to the Croker. You get the three thirds together, and you got a map leading to a lot more of that gold. Now, look, Mr. Sharkey, I found the bottle, and you're horning in. No, kid, I'm not horning in. I'm taking over. Map, gold piece, <laughs> right in Sharkey's jeans. Hey, you don't like it, huh? You're a cheap crook. Gonna hike to town. Tell the sheriff. You bet your life I am. Kid, I never yet saw a dead man walk to town. Any town. Yeah. You gonna kill me? Sure. Look like that. Oh, no. Sharky. No, the map is all yours. Not while you're blabbing around town, it isn't. Oh. Not. <laughs> Kid, I'm shot. <laughs> Julie, she shot me. You're laughing. Yeah. But, but I don't see anybody. She show from over the dunes when it's safe. Sharky. Sharky was dead. And Julie showed. I watched her come down over the dunes, holding a rifle aimed and ready. A girl gotten up like a beachcomber. She's wearing fisherman's pants slid along the thigh with long hair flying wildly. Sharky done for? Yes. Yes, he's dead. You saved my life. All I did was kill Sharky. Get the stuff he stole from me out of his pocket. Yeah, yeah sure. What's all this? Oh, just, uh, just some old junk I found in an old bottle. Sharky wasn't killing you because of some old junk. I don't like liars, mister. Sharky was a liar. All right. It's an old gold coin. There's a letter and part of a map. Part of a map that leads to more gold coins. Was that the way Sharky figured it? Yes. Then that's how I figure it. We're partners, mister. What's your name? Smitty. We're partners, Smitty. Now help me dig a hole for Sharky. Partnership is out, Julie. I'm on my own. This rifle says otherwise. <laughs> I just traded in Sharky for you, handsome. Now dig that hole and then start chasing down the gold. The gentler sex. Whoever coined that phrase never met Julie. Well, I went right to the one source that could tell me the most about Captain Crow, the signer of the old litter I found. My informant was a peg-legged old man called Uncle Kale, the village record keeper. Uh, Captain Crow, huh? Funny you should come inquiring about him. Well, uh, I'm writing a book on New England history. There, there was a, a Captain Crow, eh? There was until the county hung him 20 years ago, about the time I lost this leg. Hung him, you say? Why? Well, piracy was only one of the reasons. Crow had put out the signal flare lit off an old Jellico lighthouse so that passing ships had ram into the rocks and sink. Oh, I, uh, I guess Captain Crow's uh, scheme netted him quite a lot? Yeah, I reckon it did. Everything floating to shore was salvage, and Crow knew just where to lay waiting for it. What went down, Crow went down after. Diving suit? Yep. And grappling irons. Oh, I uh, suppose he came by a lot of gold that way, huh? Well, I can't say he didn't. There was talk once about a gold shipment that never got past them rocks off in Jellico Lighthouse. Uh-huh. I, uh, I, I ran into a couple of funny names connected with Captain Crow. I wonder if they make any sense to you. Yeah, fire away. Lady Jane and the Croker. Lady Jane and the Croker? Now, where did you come by them? Around. They mean something? Well, they're right here in my records, in the last will and testament old Captain Crow made out before they hung him. I remember reading them names like it was only yesterday. Can I, uh, can I see the will? Yeah, I guess you can. You'll be in the book, writer. I'll go scout it up. And a 
I've got it right here. Penned by old Captain Crow himself. Uh, let's see what it says. A ship's clock, grappling irons, a diver's suit, windlass, a rocker, a picture of Lady Jane. And there's one of your questions answered, son. A picture of Lady Jane? Yep. A hand-painted picture of a sailing boat. Went to his sister right here in the village the way he wanted it. Hester Crow's got the picture now hanging over a mantle. Uh, what about the croaker? <laughs> well, the croaker is written down here as a stuffed parrot. A stuffed parrot. Who did Captain Crow leave that to? Yeah, his brother Tom. Yeah, Tom's got that stuffed bird sitting on a table in his parlor right now. I've seen it there. Say, you want to hear the rest of what Crow divided around in his will? Uh, no. No, thanks. I I know all I want to know. Thanks. Esther Crow and Tom Crow. The surviving brother and sister of old Captain Crow. I had two stops to make. To pick up a painting of a ship and a stuffed parrot. Yeah. Pick them up somehow. Buy them if I could. Steal them if I had to. Hester Crow's cottage faced the sea in a deserted corner of the village. Picking my way up a short flower path to the weather-beaten front door. I knew I wouldn't have to buy or steal the Lady Jane picture. Hester Crow was just about giving up claim. To... Inside on the floor with a face splotched green and purple and twisted as if she'd just screamed at the devil was Hester Crow. Stop staring stupid and get the painting down off the mantelpiece. Julie. Julie, you killed Hester Crow. <laughs> it didn't have to be murder. When you're chasing gold, it's kill or be killed. How'd you know to go after Hester Crow? I was outside the window listening to you pump that record keeper. You just thanked him and walked away, sucker. You got a double track back there sometimes, Smitty. And murder Uncle Kale, I couldn't. <laughs> And I'll have to do it for you. I'll get that Lady Jane picture down. Rip off the back. Well, is it there or isn't it? It's there. Another one-third of a map. That proves the letter in that bottle was a McCoy. Yeah. yeah. I guess it does. We just need the last third of that map, now. The stuff bird sitting on Tom Crow's parlor table. A stuffed parrot's gonna make us rich. <laughs> what are you staring at me like that for? You're crazy. Maybe. But you're gonna be crazy about me. Am I? You'll see. Now you go down to the beach and wait for me. I'll go get that stuffed bird. You're gonna kill Tom Crow? You forgot what I told you about chasing gold? No. No, I didn't forget. You said, kill or be killed. I hiked four miles back to the beach as Julie had ordered me to. And I waited for her to come back with the stuffed parrot. Oh, I was in deep. Playing Patsy to a crazy murderess. With no way out. The hours went by and the dawn came up. But Julie didn't show. Julie didn't show. But somebody else did. Somebody else came scooting along the surf in a 20-foot motorboat. A burly guy with a wind-tanned face and a yellow poncho and a rain hat. With a sheriff's badge pinned on his chest. And with him piloting the motorboat onto the beach was a short, olive-skinned fisherman. Hiya, son. I'm Sheriff Kirkus. Hiya. You came it out here? Yeah, yeah. Is it okay? I guess it is. Outside the town limits here. Where are you from? Inland away, uh, Fall River. On the bum? Uh, sort of. Uh, I'm between jobs. And thought I'd like to get a little fishing in before locating again. Fish biting? Some. Yeah. What line are you in when you work? Uh, no line, especially soda jerking and hard jobs. Uh-huh. Been into the village lately? Uh, yeah, yeah, I thought I'd look it over. Why? Well, no reason, especially. You got any objection to looking it over some more? 
Me showing you around? Do I have to? Maybe you do. Got uh, no reason not to want to, have you? Oh, no. Why do you ask that? Eh, no reason, especially. Old Hester Crow died mysteriously last night, but uh, that shouldn't bother you any. Didn't even know the old lady, did you? No, I didn't. If you're ready now, we'll go. And if I'm not ready now? Then I'll have to take you in. Son, you're up. Uh, uh, it was Julie who shot you, Sheriff. I, I don't see nobody. Uh. She'll show up. From over the dunes. Julie showed. I watched her come down the dunes. A rifle aimed and ready. Pointing at the olive skinned little guy who piloted the motorboat to the sheriff. Sheriff changed his mind, handsome? He's dead. He came to arrest me for the murder of Hester Crow. I saw your knees knocking from up there. Good thing for us the sheriff came along. Good thing. And how? We got a real motorboat now and a pilot with it. You there, what's your name? Pedro, senora. What do we need a motorboat and pilot for? We get to Jellico Lighthouse and get that gold. Jellico Lighthouse? Yeah. Here's the third of that map that was sewed in the stuffed parrot. Put the three pieces together and read it for yourself. What happened to the owner of the stuffed parrot, Ed Crow? You just gotta know, huh? Read the map, handsome. According to the directions and arrows, there's something buried in the foundation of the Jellico Lighthouse. And there's something gold. Well, to get at it, we'd have to take the whole structure down. That means wrecking equipment. It's too big a job for us. You sure quit easy. What's wrong with dynamite in the lighthouse? How do we get the dynamite? By getting it. Pedro, come here. Si, senora. You want to stay alive? Oh, si, si, senora. Then tell us where to lay our hands on a box of dynamite. But, senora, Pedro do not know. Pedro had better know. Pedro did know. We watched Pedro steal a box of dynamite from the private pier of the county construction company. <laughs> I have stole the box of dynamite, senora. Now, let's get out of here. Head straight for the Jellico Lighthouse, Pedro, as fast as you can push this tongue. The Jellico Lighthouse is over there, senora. On that little island. See, si. I throw the light on it. I see it. The lighthouse is abandoned, isn't it? Oh, si, senora. For a long time, there is nobody in it. Stop the boat here. Here? In the middle of the water? Right here. Turn around, Pedro. What for? Do as I say. Surely. Pedro helped us. One of you's got to go, handsome. I can't keep an eye on both of you in the dark and on that island at the same time. <laughs> I'm only a helpless woman. Which will it be, Smitty? You or Pedro? Go ahead, make it me. You'll kill me anyway, sooner or later. Maybe I won't. Ready for it, Pedro? Si, senora. If I have to die, I am ready. Thank you, senor, for trying to save Pedro. Oh! oh. Planted the dynamite in the ground level of the Jellico Lighthouse during a lashing gale. Pencil strips of moon shining on Julie's face looked like tiger stripes. And there was a crazy gloating burning in her eyes. Is it all right, handsome? Yes, it's okay. Now, relieve the fuse. The whole lighthouse will blow sky high in a minute. And shower us with gold. Let's get out of here before we blow up. Let's not get out of here. Let's not. But Julie no. will. You will. Move and I'll shoot you. Go ahead, shoot. I'm coming. <laughs> Not good enough, Julie. I've got enough left to choke the living breath. Kill us. Be killed, you said. <laughs> she sagged in my hands and fell over unconscious. I couldn't bring her to it, drag myself out in time. Hey! 
I'm here now. On the beach. Blinded by the blast. Writing my story on the wind. <laughs> Hello, son. You find that cold yet? Uncle Kalo. How'd you know to come here? I was the one who sent you here. You sent me here? Oh, sure. You gave me the lead on... on what Lady Jane and the croaker meant. More than that, I was the one who drew up that letter and map and put it into that old rum bottle for some scavenger to find on the beach. I, I don't get it. Old Captain Crow never had any gold. It was me that made you think he had by forging them writings on an old paper I tore out of a book by hiding pieces of a map in the back of that picture and in the stuffed parrot. Why did you do all that? Payment for my leg. The leg I lost. Oh, sounds crazy. I lost my leg in the service of the county, but not a cent come to me for the loss. I was to get my pension from the county board, except for two votes going to get it. Two votes. Hester Crow and Ed Crow voted against you. They did. May they squirm everlastingly in their graves. So, your scheme was to get them murdered by someone who was after the pieces of a map you planted in their homes. <laughs> yeah, and it worked. Jim Dandy. <laughs> what? Why did you come here now? To laugh at me for playing sucker? No, son. To make my peace with you before you die. I left the story behind me all written out, and they'll be coming here after me. I've had my revenge. And I allow I'm touched in the head some, but... I wanted to make my peace with a good lad like you before you die. You scared? Not of dying so much. And then of what? Of, of someone waiting to meet me where I'm going. She swapped Chucky in for me. <laughs> you hear her? I got rid of her once. But I, I'm afraid she's going to get me this time. <laughs> Now that he's crossed the great divide, Smitty's troubles begin to multiply. Julie won't take no for an answer, especially now that she knows Smitty's a real gone guy. <laughs> Did somebody say Uncle Kale gambled a $50 coin and hit the crackpot? Hmm. <laughs> Well, what do you say we close this merriment with a moral, everybody? When bottle washes out of the sea, don't pull the stopper, sucker. You might blow your own top. <laughs> uh. Be with us again next week at this same time for another Inner Sanctum Mystery. This program was heard in the United States over CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System, and has been rebroadcast for servicemen and women overseas. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio Service, the voice of information and education.